Okay, so the purpose of this video is to show you that you can use inexpensive lenses for large format. Um, this particular lens is off of a Chinese LED projector that has a 5 inch screen. However, you can get these on Alibaba for 40 bucks. They're 150, 185 millimeter. That's kind of fuzzy on exactly. I've been trying to figure that one out. But they're f2.5, so they're fairly fast for a 4x5 camera. You can actually get quite a bit of speed even using paper negatives. So I'm going to show some test shots I made with this. Okay, so the first thing I want to go over is the setup. Um, the first thing I did was do some test shots in my basement, which is my dark room basically. I didn't have a shutter on the camera. Um, here are some pictures of the camera. I basically just taped in the lens into a 4x5 camera I have just to make it easier to experiment with. Um, uh, I didn't use the shutter. What I did was I focused everything, shut the lights out, put the put the film holder in, uh, took the dark slide out and then turned the lights on and off which is very crude but it worked for this experiment anyway. Um, you can see I made a little makeshift aperture card to put on top in front of the lens to uh, get a little more in focus and that was the setup for the inside or the photos I did um, the photos I did in my basement with the vase to do some tests for like portraits etc the other tests outside if you see here I made this um, it's kind of, it's guillotine shutter but it's basically you just push it or pull it um, I want to say that's what attributed to some of the lack of quality because I think it was shaking the camera around that's something I got to do a little something I've got to work on is the is the um, shutter portion of that lens to be able to use it better but um, you can see the way I set it up so I could take pictures outside and these are pictures just outside my driveway um, so you have a tree they're not the they're not the crispest uh, even with the um, or sharpest I should say they're not that sharp but I think it a lot of it has to do with the camera was shaking because of the homemade shutter um, now the ones I did in the basement where I didn't have uh, a shutter I just used the lights themselves uh, the first ones were very um, washed out <laughs> I was testing using just blue lights only I have RGB lights down there and I had seen some articles that said that blue LEDs were good for um, paper uh, wet plate and dry plate photography because they're orthochromatic well it was a little too good actually um, so I had to just switch to my regular lights and turn them on for about a half a second so that's when I could actually start taking pictures or well test shots um, and you can see how I I'll put, throw a picture in here of how I set it all up or how it looked. Uh, I put some lights in the background just to, you know, kind of give a bokeh effect plus to kind of see what changes. Um, even w wide open, it didn't do bad. It, it actually did some interesting effects. Um, the, the focus plane's a little shifted because of the angle I had the camera. Um, so it isn't exactly the lens's fault for the bottom being more out of focus than the top. I did try to adjust the standards, but I think it was just too much of an angle. Um, one of them I forgot to turn the background lights on. Uh, but um, the one where I had the aperture card on, you can tell because the, the lights, it was just a really crappy cutout. So you can see that on all the, on the bokeh, you can see the 
irregular circle but I really like the image it's got a lot of detail I, I really wasn't expecting that this is why I think that the um, I think that the outside pictures or landscapes would be just fine it's just it has to be done properly um, I suppose I could just put a really high density neutral density filter and 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 a lens cap kind of like the old Petzval lenses did to test it out but I was just this was just some test to show that uh, an inexpensive projector lens can indeed take pictures and they're not as bad as you might assume in fact for um, for large format photography with alternative pr process like um, not alternative process but using either paper negatives or ortho film or wet plate or dry plate or whatever where your the ISO is extremely low it actually does give you some advantages there and I would say that the artistic look of it is probably what a lot of people would want anyway um, except in maybe landscapes that's the one area that you don't exactly want it I do myself I do like uh, taking pictures of in the woods where there's out of focus things and bokeh and such kind of like I like taking pictures in the woods as though I was taking portraits so that's just my personal preference but uh, but these are the uh, these are the shots of what I've tested so far and these are just four by five pieces of cheap Adorama paper. I just bought the eight by 10, a uh, hundred pack, cause it's like 50 bucks for a hundred, a hundred pack of it. And then I um, cut them up to fit a film holder. So um, that's what I've done just in a day playing around. And then here in a second, I'll show you some different lens options to achieve basically the same thing. This is an assortment of other lenses that can be used. There's the, like I said, this can be found on Alibaba or, and there's several different versions of it. One handy thing about the projector lenses is you already have focusing. So if you have a camera body you can fit it in that doesn't have a bellows, you know, like a homemade system, the focusing is already there. You just have to make sure that the distance to the film plane is infinity. So that's one advantage of that. The uh, disadvantage is shutter and aperture. You can kind of get around aperture shutter I'm working on and I'm going to make a video on that. Um, one lens that works very good is old um, in larger lenses. This is a 161 millimeter 4. f4.5. So it makes a very good lens. I haven't made any tests of that because several people have already done that so I already know that they're very good lenses and they'll take good pictures you just have to make a shutter for them which is a video I'm working on using this so you can make a shutter these are surplus shutters I'm working on that but I'm also working on shutters that you can just make with stuff you have the other set of lenses, and larger lenses are good, but you can't get them big enough to do like an 8x10 camera, at least not that I've found. Um, you can get these up to 500 millimeter, um, so you should be able to make a 8x10 camera just fine. The other lenses you can use are old projector lenses, like that's a newer projector lens. But if you want to use older projector lenses, these, this is 15 inch, um, I got these as a set, actually 15, I paid 15 bucks, which is almost stealing them. Um, I have a 15 inch lens, two 14 inches, and this is really cool, this is a six and a half, and if I calculate it right, this is f2 and a half, or 2.6, these are f6 and a half, and I think this is f8 but all of those can be used um, this one's only going to be good for 4x5 the rest of them 8x10 but another cool lens you can get you can always get process lenses some of them can still be expensive but um, 
one cool thing for 8x10 that I'm, I can't wait to try out is this monster. It's an f3.6 18 inch lens and that should do some really cool stuff. So projector lenses, old projector lenses, as long as you can get good focal lengths for the format you're doing, they all work great. Well with, they're faster so you're going to have to play around with your some homemade apertures and stuff so they're 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 um focusing plane this one the focal plane is is razor thin like a millimeter or less so you do have to do some playing around if you want to do like uh, well even for portraits but for landscape um that one's a little finicky still something i want to try these i haven't tried out so i'm going to try them soon and see how that works out So the advantage of these projector lenses are speed, um, especially this one, this one, and this one, because they're all around. These are f two and a half or so, and this is f three and a half. So they their speed is incredible, which is really good for paper negatives, because they're slow ISO anyway. Now you can do some landscape photography if you really have to play around with them to get it to work right if you really want really crisp sharp pictures the next best thing like I said for a 4x5 you can get a, a well longest focal length you can find um, enlarging lens and the handy thing about that is they already have their own aperture this one's kinda gummed up so it's hard to turn they have their own aperture so all you have to do is worry about shutter this is one I got off eBay this is a 19 inch uh, f11 so this will do some this would be great for landscape stuff this thing goes down to it's crazy it goes down to f90 um, but so if you really just want to do landscape stuff and speed isn't really a problem you can get different process lenses on eBay. You just have to be careful what you're looking with. Do some research. You can use enlarging lenses as long as you're not trying to do um, like 8x10 or 5x7. Probably 4x5 is the maximum. And again, you need to get the longest focal length you can find. With the process lenses, since you already have aperture, then again, it's just shutter. And... I'm trying to play around with some guillotine shutters and stuff. We'll see how that works. Um, these are all good for speed. You just have the disadvantage of very thin focal plane. And, um, well, I mean, that's, that's really the main thing. If you're doing a uh, landscape, that's going to be more of a problem. But you could always do, I'm, I'm wondering if you could almost do these com combined with pinholes and get crisper images, I'll have to see. But um, these are all inexpensive lenses. Um, like I said, these here will take really good crisp, clear pictures. These are really good for portraits. These, especially this one and this one, just looking on ground glass, do that really cool swirly bokeh if you have a... Like if you have if you're doing a portrait and there's trees in the background or a forest in the background, the whole forest almost swirls around the subject. So these have that cool effect with them. Um, but that's just some stuff I've played around with. Like I said, the the disadvantage of large format or one of the the main disadvantage for me anyway is the um, expensive lens. But if you can do something with these lenses you can get especially something they make I mean they make these new then you can make a whole setup and um, it wouldn't be that expensive also the idea my idea with this is I want to find a the most inexpensive setup a person could do and do anywhere from 4x5 to 8x10 with paper negatives if they wanted but also there's inexpensive uh, ortho litho film and be able to just do um, a printing frame instead of needing an enlarger because that's I happen to get an enlarger in cheaply and that was just a that was just 
dumb luck so it's not something that's easy to find nowadays so um, if you can do all this with a printing frame then you can have the most minimal setup and still do all the photography you want I mean you could I guess if you didn't want to enlarge and you weren't really caring about making say actual silver gelatin prints or alternative photography prints like Santa types and such you can always just scan them and and use them digitally but I just try to find the most options possible for someone who's wanting to try this out so uh, I will see you in the next video I think I'm gonna do I haven't been able to find anything about it so I'm gonna test uh, I've been putting paper negatives or paper in regular silver gelatin paper in a 35 millimeter and a 6x6 camera and I want to see if I can enlarge it and what kind of detail I get off of that so that will be the next video and I will see you all later one thing I did want to add was that um, all the images you've seen were negative images I just scanned them and reversed them to be able to view them um, if you want to do positive images you can either just scan them and reverse them and print them or if you just wanting to plain old analog photography you have a few options actually you can scan or not scan I'm sorry you can make the paper negative then lay that paper negative directly onto a piece of paper and expose it and um, it's a it's a contact print you, you can make a positive that way um, you can instead of using paper you can use film which the the one that I like is called um, ortholithofilm and it's as slow as the paper maybe even slower so um, and then you can use that as a contact to make a print if you don't want to do negative positive uh, you can do a there's a paper called Herman direct positive that just uses regular um, black and white chemistry and makes a positive image and there's also a process using um, peroxide and citric acid that makes a positive which uh, uh, there's some videos from Joe Van Cleve uh, and a couple other people regarding that so I'll put links to the ortholithofilm the paper I used and some links to the reversal process video I was talking about with the peroxide um, just in case you want to use any of those methods in this in this type of setup